All right, thanks, guys. So apparently looking on the schedule, you could have gone from a track upstairs on how to get started in cybersecurity to my presentation on how to get started in cybersecurity. So hopefully that just means that this is uh, an important topic for a lot of you guys. Uh, that's my email if you want to get in touch with me. Um, that should be funny to you, hopefully. Uh, XKCD is great. So if that's not funny to you and you're trying to get into cybersecurity, go look up SQL and then eventually that should become funny to you. And once you understand all of these inside jokes, then you're definitely part of cybersecurity. Um, I may swear, I see some kids up front, so I may try not to since you're here, um, but I'll do my best. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on who I am. On, uh oh, technical technical difficulties. Okay, we're good. Maybe. All right. Um, I've done a lot of different things in my career. I think a lot of people who have paths in some form of cybersecurity um, have a lot of different paths and life stories. Uh, so if you get a mentor, they can talk you through how they got into cybersecurity. Um, I secretly joined the army at 19 and got married. One of those things has worked really well for me. I have a whole bunch of certifications. Uh, we can talk about that a little bit later as well. So when people say I want to get in cybersecurity, that's awesome. But that doesn't really tell me anything because cybersecurity is a terrible term. And I've lost the presentation again. So this is going well. So we have to get, a, we have to get an understanding of what you and I mean with cybersecurity. So there's a lot of different resources that we could talk to in terms of what is cybersecurity. I particularly like the 52 job roles that the National Institute of Standards and Technology, the NIST, has. They break down all of those 52 particular cybersecurity job roles into, in the US we call them knowledge, skills, and abilities, KSAs. So they're very detailed. But even with those two, even with those 52 cybersecurity job roles, they don't cover every possible cybersecurity job role. They don't specifically have one that's a pen tester. They don't specifically have one that's a cyber threat intelligence. They don't have a malware reverser. So that still isn't even all inclusive uh, into all of the different cybersecurity job roles there are. So when I mentor someone who is trying to break into cybersecurity out of college or pivot mid-career into cybersecurity, we have to have some understanding and they probably need to do some research to, to see what they think is interesting within cybersecurity. Um, so that's my first uh, piece of advice generally, is if, if you're trying to break into it, you should probably do some research. I, I particularly like that. Um, if you're the type of person who represents the meme on the slide, then this may be a field for you at some point because a lot of people in cybersecurity have started out in IT. But again, it's not always a traditional path. Uh, I am still that person. I just proactively fix everybody's computers during the holidays. I just plan for it, right? It's like the day before Thanksgiving, fix all the in-laws' computers and make sure everything works well. Why is your internet so slow? Uh, so if, if you're that kind of person already, and that interests you, and it doesn't drive you insane, uh, you know, you, you may be on the right track. So to get started in cybersecurity, I don't think it's particularly difficult, other than trying to focus down what it is you want to study, because it's such a large field. Right, so if, if somebody tells you that they work in cybersecurity, they haven't really told you anything. That's the same as saying, I work in the medical field. Right? I could be a brain surgeon, or I could be in medical billing. They're both in the medical field. That's the same thing happens in cybersecurity or the term cyber. The term cyber is becoming more popular in the US, and that's an even worse term in my opinion, because it tells me even less about your particular career field. So a couple of points on this slide. If this is new, you're trying to get into cybersecurity, I would not, I would try to find something that you find interesting. So if you don't find programming interested and it drives you mad, then programming is probably not something that you should continue to study and you probably don't want to be a programmer. Uh, you may need to understand some programming or understand basic scripting, but there's a lot of other roles within cybersecurity that maybe your skill set and personality is geared for because we have so many. So I've lost the presentation again. So some other things in terms of getting started, there's a ton of free resources available on the internet. So YouTube, Cybrary, lots of people's blogs, follow, follow a number of people on Twitter in the cybersecurity community, are all great free resources. 
I'm also going to, if you get the slides then later, I have a lot of free resources and links in here as well. Sure. So uh, I know in the United States, at least, and I don't know if it's the same here, there's this huge infatuation with the certifications, right? That's a big, uh, I say it's kind of a big problem. Some of them are, are better than others. Um, I have a whole bunch. Some of them really carry some weight, and some of them don't. So. If you're interested in vulnerability testing and pen testing, OSCP is, an, is really something that still holds a lot of street cred, basically. But the, the training that is offered in these courses does not require you to necessarily pay for it because a lot of the books that are available that are going to teach you the basics of ethical hacking or the basics of network security, you know, you could get that book for $40. You don't need to spend $3,000 on a CompTIA Security Plus class. And the value of it is super questionable. And I say that as somebody who teaches that course. What you are going to have to do is practice on your own if you're going to be a hands-on hands -on keyboard type of person, which is how most of us generally get started. And that is going to require you to have a home lab of some kind. So my laptop really doesn't like to present today. OK, we're back. So. There's a couple of different things here. So you need some technical skills if this is going to be the field for you. Um, but this was actually talked about much earlier today. The, the guy from Tenable was giving a track in one of the breakout rooms about the type of people they look for. This drive, the passion, the innovate, the initiative, the curiosity, those are really critical. right? And that's reflected in the Google flowchart, which my mother asks, how do you know everything? Well, I'm glad that my mom thinks I know everything, but I don't because I Google something. And if that didn't fix her laptop, well, then you just go in the endless cycle of trying to figure it out until you get to the solution. Or eventually, you call your friend because you can't possibly know everything in cybersecurity. Right? That's, it's impossible to do that. There's a few people that are on my short list that I will call first because they almost always know everything, but there's no such person in this field. So the other thing about initiative and curiosity is a lot of people s seem like they have a hurdle, this, uh, this hurdle to get started with things. So my, my real quick story is I was mentoring a woman who wanted eventually one day to be a pen tester. So I said, well, you're going to need some home labs. You're going to need some VMs. You're going to have to set this up. And I pointed her to some sites. There's I don't know how many videos on YouTube about how to set up VMs. Um, and, and she kept asking me questions, and she couldn't really figure it out. And that, there's, a, there's a hurdle there that if you aren't willing to kind of figure out some of the real basic things, then, then, I, then I can't help you, because this might honestly not be the right field for someone like that. Uh, in a discussion we had upstairs, we talked about breaking things during this learning process. And you, you are going to break things. It's part of the learning process. You, I have bricked a number of Windows systems. Uh, I think that's part of the learning process, not just for cybersecurity, but, but in general. right? It's why we're learning it. Um, but a lot of people have that intimidation of, well, I don't really know what I'm doing yet, and I'm worried I might break something. Well. If you can't figure out the VM, you should at least you know, get a cheap laptop or build a desktop and get some good learning experience that way, because it's not very expensive to build a desktop anymore. Um, so anyway, you're going to have to practice hands-on skills. You're going to have to get over that initial fear of sort of messing up or breaking something in order to practice this on your own. So in terms of tools that you want to learn and practice on as you get into cybersecurity, it really does depend on which field you want to study, right? Not all things are made equal. So if you're going to be on, on, on a SOC team as a network analyst or a defender, they go by a lot of different names, there's probably some more specific tools I could point you to. If you're really interested in forensics, well, there's a number of free forensics tools that you could download and play with and understand the process of forensics analysis. I like Bulk Extractor. I've used it on a couple of CTFs. If you want to be a vulnerability analyst and maybe a pen tester one day, right? there's a different set of tools and software you should practice on your own. So I'm happy to help drive you towards the types of learning activities once we have some better idea of where in cybersecurity you think your future lies. Right? Because if you want to do policy analysis and risk, then I don't really necessarily need you to be really proficient at Metasploit. 
right? We're kind of wasting each other's times at that point. Right, so again, it goes back to the first slide, is try to do some research and find, figure out what you find interesting so that your mentors can help you tailor the sorts of learning activities that are most geared to where you want to put yourself. Because there, you can't just study everything, that's impossible. And then the other thing here is, when I say like knowing the tools, it means proficient. So I get this question quite, quite a bit. When you're trying to get that first job opportunity, well, how do, how do I get these skills on my resume? Well, if you've spent 200 hours hacking vulnerable VMs with Kali and Metasploit and whatever other tools you have, I think you can put that on your resume as you know, home lab use, research, whatever you want to call it, somewhere on your, your CV or on your resume. And when you get to the technical interview, you know, that one shows that you have that initiative, which if they're actually a team you want to be on, they should be looking for that kind of person who wants to do that initiative and research on their own. All right, it stayed up there for now. So I know a lot, of, a lot of the talks today around how do you get your first job or hiring assistance and tailing your CV, and I think this speaks to some of those a little bit. Um, again, it is gonna depend specifically on your job. Um, I think SAN certifications are pretty much the industry standard today. I've lost the slide again. Just for a moment, it should flicker back, I guess. So I still think SANs are the best. They're also really expensive, which is why I haven't gotten anybody to pay for me to go yet. Um, I have some friends who teach SANs classes. They sound amazing. Most of the SANs classes also do have some labs as part of them, which a lot of the traditional boot camps in industry right now don't. I teach Certified Ethical Hacker. I've taught it 40, 60 times, something like that. I don't have time in the EC Council Certified Ethical Hacker class to give you labs, and the labs are actually not very good that EC Council has available anyway. It's much better for you to set up the labs in your own home and VMs, and there's a number of free resources on the internet that will tell you how to get started with Kali and how to get started, started exploiting boxes in, in the VM environment. Um, so there are some basic things in cybersecurity. If you're going to be any sort of technical hands-on, you should have a really good understanding of Windows, probably a pretty good understanding of Linux, possibly a good understanding of Mac, which is really a Linux build. All right. So if you don't understand things like Windows domains, that's going to be critical because most of your big enterprises are running Windows for the most part. Probably having some basic knowledge of VMs would be applicable as well, just general background information. All right. So those are the sorts of basic things you're going to want to study. If you want to do threat intelligence or open source intelligence, OSINT, there's a whole other list of things I could give you that you should focus on and be familiar with, right? Virus Total, maybe Maltigo, Central Ops. So there's a whole host of different tools if that's the direction that you think you want to go into cybersecurity. So again, you're going to have to practice whichever tools are most applicable in your home lab. It's a good thing I don't have many slides since they keep breaking. Um, and I'm going to open this up for questions. I really want to entertain your questions for a couple minutes before everybody goes to get some beers. This is the key, that opportunity slide right there. So you have to have some skills. And you have to know people, and then those things are going to merge somehow. They're going to know of an opportunity. You're going to get a referral, right? So attending events like this is great. Attending Capture the Flags is great. Having LinkedIn or whatever other mechanisms you have online to stay connected to the community, following people on Twitter, it's probably OK, so at least you know what's going on. But I think that's the most important one at the top. Um, also, if you come into an interview with me, I expect you to know something. Like, even if it's your first job, I expect that you're following news about this industry. So if you can't speak to any of the things that are happening in the industry, then I'm going to question whether you're really serious about working in this industry. Right? So again, it'll be tailored for specifically what it is you're interviewing for. But I mean, if you're not familiar that GitHub was just purchased by Microsoft, I mean, that's pretty, pretty big news. Um, or VPN filter malware. I mean, there's some big things that it's not even cyber news. I mean, this is on like regular news sites in a large part. Um, I think some other specific tips for, for the hiring process is you really should practice your interview skills and your elevator speech. 
uh, your mom, dad, your friends, give them a list of questions. They don't have to understand necessarily what they're saying, but actually practice that. You could practice in front of a mirror as well. It sounds weird. Someone else said that for the social engineering. You could do the same things for your interview as well. Um, the self-confidence one, you only know what you know, right? And this was, this was actually talked about in one of the other uh, discussions I had today, is it's okay to say, I don't know, because we can't know everything, so how, if you run across a problem, what are you gonna do when you don't know? And how do you speak to that? Because that shows that you have some way to get past, though, I've run into this problem and I don't know what to do. Okay, well, you turn to Google. Well, what if Google doesn't really give you the results? What's your next option? All right, and probably the next option is not Bing. So what are you, do you have friends you're gonna call on? Do you have a professional network? Are you gonna ask your coworkers? How, how do you get past that first hurdle where you don't know the answer to a particular question? Again, I, I think you should study what you enjoy. There's lots of opportunities in cybersecurity to study what you enjoy. Um, and the last bit up here that I'll talk to here is uh, try to find a mentor that will stick with you through multiple career changes, right? So it might not be the person where you work now or the person at your first job, um, because that person should be able to give you advice as your career progresses. I think mentoring is something that's sort of going away, and I think it's sad because I think it's really helpful. And there's plenty of people that could be mentors. You don't have to be in the industry for 20 years to be a mentor. If you're in your second job at a SOC, you probably know a lot that would be helpful to the graduates today, right? So yeah, maybe you've only worked in the industry for four or five years, but that's four or five years more knowledge about your entry level career and starting path that the graduate today wouldn't know. So just think about that as well. There's a whole bunch of references and links, so hopefully when you get the slides, you'll be able to get all of these. The second one is particularly really useful because it's just an aggregation of a whole bunch of other InfoSec-related sites because he's old enough to go by the old term because at least InfoSec means something as opposed to cyber. Um, so not all of these will be applicable to you. Right? But again, I'm also trying to show you that there's a ton of free resources online. So you do not have to spend money to get started in cybersecurity. Right? There, there's lots of different training for all of those 52 job-related areas within cybersecurity. So again, don't, don't go read the ICIT Know Your Enemies if you're not going to be in cyber threat intelligence because that's all about defining advanced persistent threats. So if that's not for you, that's fine. So this is my last slide, which is good because they keep disappearing anyway. I really want to open it up for questions that you have for me now. So um, hopefully you are going to ask some questions before we all go get some beers later at the after party.